Coming up on today's episode, stuff 300 hours of HD video in your DVR. Roku, Netflix, HD, how does it stack up? Can we get Blu-ray running on OS X and a 65-inch 1080p TV for under $1,000? Plus, we got the Blu-ray releases for the week of October 20th, 2009. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Netflix, Squarespace, and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over-the-air, hard drive, thumb drive. If it's in HD, we like it. Oh my goodness. So, I, I, we got to start it out. What are you watching this week? I'm watching a show called uh, Secret Girlfriend. It's on Secret Girlfriend. Yes, it's on Comedy Central. I, it, it's not in HD, but it ah. is laugh out loud funny. Uh, good adult humor. I will, I will leave it at that. And on the HD side of things, I, I was uh, this week I enjoyed the 10th anniversary special of my favorite cooking show, Good Eats, on the Food Network. Really? That was in HD, and it was really good. Alton Brown is just my favorite <laughs> mad food scientist out there in the world, and uh, anything, anytime I can catch a show, I'm going to do that. But also, I was also dragged to my local mm. sports bar that has something like 21 brand new 1080p LCD screens surrounding me, and I was treated to Portugal's victory. Over Malta, 4-0 for the World Cup. Well, they're going to the World Cup eventually. Well, they're going to the playoffs. Will this be they're soccer? Not. This would be soccer. <laughs> I guess I it was ask. just epic, epic fun. The people around me were having a blast, and it would give me, I mean, I, I enjoy soccer. I enjoy watching it, but it also, with 21 other TVs, it was really there's, good to be. There's other things to watch. President's Cup, NASCAR, blah, I think blah, the blah. hockey season is still going, right? That too, and <laughs> baseball, and football, and oh, anyway. Is the World Cup going to be in HD ever? It, it better. It better. That that was my big question because the game they were showing it was in widescreen, but it wasn't. It didn't look HD to me. It looked a little mm -hmm. over compressed. So I'm hoping at least when they bring the World Cup 2010, it will be in HD. It, it would be a shame if it wasn't. That's all I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Sports HD, two good things that go great together. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I've been watching like basically all over HBO. Oh, that's and cool. I, I can't even tell you a single thing I've been watching. It's been one of those weeks where like I keep getting interrupted by a small child to watch standard definition cartoons on Nick Jr., which used to be Noggin, which none of you care about, but I will say I've been watching Serenity on Blu-ray, and I'm, I'm having one of those days where it's like I'm, I'm looking at the CG and seeing how the CG holds up in Blu-ray. It's kind of fun to do, which is a sign that That's I am a, a geek. On the news front, select. I like that phrase. Select Samsung HDTVs can now play back video from Amazon's library of streaming movies after users download an Amazon Video On Demand widget. Widgets are like the big thing. Like Finn is one of the big things for HDTVs going oh. in the end of the year and widgets. Definitely. What's going on with the whole widget scene? Are, are all TVs pretty much using the same widgets or the competing widgets? Uh, some companies are doing their own thing like Sharp's latest Aquos models mm -hmm. with internet capabilities. They have their pretty much hand-spun menu system for that kind of content. However, you look at TVs like what Sony's doing and, and, and of course, Samsung, they're integrating widget systems as well. And it's easy to integrate a widget into a TV compared to, especially when they get the content from the third right. party provided at little cost, and all you really have to do is just enable the functionality within the set itself. Now, I know the Vizio stuff, is that using Yahoo widgets? Yes, the Yahoo okay. widget engine is one of the favorites right now. I believe it has the least restrictions in terms mm -hmm. of what else you want to mix in with it. That's why a lot of manufacturers, HDTV manufacturers, have jumped on it in that, hey, if we add this functionality, we're not going to be locked into something we might want to change right. down the road. And that's, that's, that was my biggest concern initially. It's like, oh great, I'm going to get locked into one proprietary, somebody's little playground for video delivery, right. and it's going to leave the company kind of hanging in terms of what their consumers want, or the customers want to have. Now, I know LG is delivering Netflix directly in their HDTVs. Is that a widget system? Is it is it in the, the operating system of the television, or how's that? That, I believe, done? they just take the API directly from whatever content provider they're going to go with. Like the new Vudu HD mm -hmm. upgrade for their set-top boxes, right. add basically their Blu-ray player boxes. That was just a, an upgraded firmware feature within the player itself to support streaming of that particular content. Not necessarily a widget package at all, it was just you know another addition. They had the space and the memory and the, cap uh, the capability in the box, and they just add that feature. 
in my opinion, it's great. It's great to see a product that's over a year old still mm -hmm. getting updates like that that add new functionality for free if you're subscribing to the service. At least. My, my HGTV's operating system never got an upgrade. I, I never got a firmware update either from my, my, oh. old, my old 1080p <laughs> TV. It's just not cutting it anymore. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so a few weeks ago we talked about uh, you know the state of California, the California Energy Commission was going to mandate higher performance on HGTVs. Well, the Plasma Display Coalition has freaked the delete expletive out. They call the recent, well, they basically they're calling what the California Energy Commission said about plasma TVs a misinformation campaign using outdated information about plasma TVs and it quotes energy statistics for models never sold in the U.S. and that it pretty much completely ignores the plasma TVs that have been manufactured under the current Energy Star specs. Um, yeah, the PDC basically, the, the Plasma Display Coalition, I want yes. to say, that believes that the, the CEC mob. should be concentrated on getting old gla analog glass tube CRTs out of home and replacing them with Energy Star certified products that are already in the market, citing their own stats where a 36 inch CRT can easily consume close to 300 watts. That's approximately twice the energy of a current 42 inch plasma. And of course the plasma TV is displaying considerably more information on the screen. Oh my goodness, plasma manufacturers are pissed. The CEA is pissed. And I'm quite sure somebody in Washington is pissed too. We just haven't heard from them yet. It's been, it's been funny actually to watch the sort of like, the, the, this, there's this giant press release. It's a great read, we'll link to it in the show notes. And there's a star, it's just good to see that kind of service out there that the manufacturers really pay attention to right. because that is really dramatically lowered power consumption for television products mm -hmm. and all other many consumer electronics categories as well but in particular for TVs just in the last few years literally 50% reductions right. I've seen especially in the LCD side plasmas I never thought would be able to get energy star certification they're doing it although usually you're not going to see nearly as bright of a picture in a mm -hmm. brightly lit room as you will out of an LCD screen. It's interesting. And you look, plasmas are, are, I think, are in a lot of ways against the ropes, probably just because LCDs have become so competitive. But yeah, boy, the you know, it's, it's fun to watch political arguments about television screens. It's kind of amusing. How about a little bit of cheerful news then? I Actually, I do have cheerful news. In, in, well, in more cheerful news, one of my favorite set-top players, Western Digital's WDTV, the HD media player from the hard drive manufacturer, has gotten an upgrade. They now have a version with an Ethernet jack. Yay. That means the set-top box is no longer hard drive only. It's called the WDTV Live Media Player. It's a good upgrade. We just need to add support for like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, you know, pretty much everything else out there for media playback. But it will you know, not only will it play from a local hard drive, it'll basically stream content over your home network. Nice addition to a, a very clean little box. I'll be curious to see if they have like DLNA support for simplified streaming from like your NAS device or something like that. I believe they do. We are amassing a, a gigantic pile of set-dot players. Uh, you guys keep sending in suggestions to us to hdnation at revision3.com and, and probably next week. I think we're going to end up doing one a week for now until probably at least like the end of the year. There are that many of them out there. I mean, I think we mentioned, like, you know, we're not even talking about, like, the Samsung HD. No, oh, let's not even get into it. It's a, it's a long list without even talking about Blu-ray players, HD TVs, and everything else. Lots of cool decoder hardware out there that we can yes. take advantage of and show to you guys. Oh, my goodness. Hey, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, the fine people at Netflix. Take a walk to the nearest video store by my house, and you can rent VHS tapes in Chinese. Chances are your local video store at least has DVDs. If you rent using Netflix, you can have Blu-ray discs shipped straight to your door. Netflix has over 90,000 titles online, including a ton of Blu-ray offerings with free shipping to your home and back. And with over 40 shipping centers in the U.S., almost all Netflix deliveries happen in a single business day. DVD-only plans start from $4.99. You can get a no-risk two-week free trial membership at www.netflix.com slash hdnation. And do us a favor, don't forget to type the www when you're using this code. Please support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Netflix. Unless you've been living in a cave, you know Netflix is now offering a select number of instant viewing titles in 720p high definition. All you need is a Netflix-enabled set-top box that is HD capable, like the Roku digital video player, the Xbox 360, TiVo HD, or any of the numerous Blu-ray players that also support Netflix video streaming using a broadband internet connection. Now, we also know that plenty of you are watching lots of content that way. So here's our top five list of Netflix streaming movies in HD. And to help me out is our producer, Mr. Roger Chang. 
Yeah, thanks for having me on my show. You're welcome. So, shall we get started? Let's dig right in. First is your pick, um, Hudson Hawk. Now, this is possibly one of Bruce Willis's most underrated works ever, but I understand you're a big fan of it. Uh, some of the comedy elements involved. Sandra Bernhardt plays one of the best bad guy villains that I could ever ask for, and her husband, oh, I forget the guy's name, but has arguably the greatest line in the movie, and I'll leave it up to you to find out which line that might be. All right, my favorite is actually Serenity. Now, this is Joss Whedon's farewell film to the Firefly TV series. It ties up a lot of loose ends in the story, as well as kind of uncovering the origins of the Reavers that plague humanity. Now, the cool thing is, if you've never watched the series Firefly, you can still enjoy the movie because it's a standalone feature. So, if you have always been wondering what Firefly has been about, and not sure you want to sit through the whole series, watch Serenity. And I had to give a quick shout out to Discovery's Extreme Engineering Show. This is an episodic program that they cover usually the construction or the, 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 the design of a particular item somewhere around the world. And they have quite a few episodes available for streaming. And it's, hey, it's there, it's in HD, check it out. Right now, speaking of TV, there's a lot of TV series on HD in Netflix. Now the cool thing is, is if you've never watched Lost, The Office, 30 Rock Heroes, you can catch up because they have at least three or four seasons available to download or uh, to stream and watch. And you know what? It's great because you don't need to go out and buy a box set or wait for discs to show up at your uh, mailbox. You just click on a button and it downloads. Awesome. Or clogging up your queue with those season discs where you end up having to download the whole box set in order just to see maybe that first disc. Just do it streaming and save yourself a lot of time that way. Totally agree. Uh, another great title, uh, The King of Kong, a documentary about Steve Weddy's attempt to break the Donkey Kong score world record and the machinations of his rival to discredit and maintain his title as the man with the highest Donkey Kong score. I, I think whether or not you even like arcade games, it's just a title worth checking out for some of the drama and the behind the scenes. The drama is unbelievable. <laughs> really? the, the ending's funny. And you know what? You actually care a lot about the character, even though it's, it, it is a stylized documentary. I highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys that kind of film. Now, speaking of films, one I enjoyed a lot was Pan's Labyrinth. Now, this is a Guillermo del Toro movie. Uh, it's just basically a Spanish fairy tale for adults about a little girl who discovers a labyrinth that connects her to a magical underworld during a very tumultuous period during uh, 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 Spain's uh, Civil War. So it ties in a lot of kind of uh, allegories into it. And you know, it's very stylized and I wasn't, wasn't really sure how well it would uh, hold up with the streaming, but it holds up as well as the DVD. Cool deal. And uh, sharing a similar title it would be just Labyrinth, uh, starring Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie. This tale centers on the character Sarah, who must travel to the city of Goblins via Labyrinth to rescue her kidnapped brother. Now, if this is one thing I love about the movie, Jennifer Connelly <laughs> and David Bowie. I mean, come on. If you watch David Bowie in this movie, you'll never look at him in the same light again. Or maybe Good the same deal. light. Uh, one I enjoyed a lot was Conan the Barbarian. Oh, classic. Now, Conan the Barbarian is a classic Arnold movie where he's basically at his best as a big, muscly brute guy. Now, it has a lot of the unintelligible grunts that we've come to expect from Schwarzenegger, <laughs> but it also has James Earl Jones as the classic set-worshipping heavy. Uh, it's awesome. If you're into sword and sorcery or you're just into action flicks, it's something that anyone can enjoy. However, I will recommend that you do not show to young children because there are plenty of topless scenes in it. And we have Breaker Morant. It's a film about the court-martial of Australian Lieutenant Breaker Morant, a soldier during the, in the British Army during the Second Boer War. Now, this is a great movie for history buffs as well as military buffs. It uh, explores the political reasons behind the war as well as kind of the mil military code of justice at the time for the British Army. So it's a great all-around movie. Highly recommend it. Not a happy flick, but definitely it's engrossing, no doubt. All right, now I understand you have the new releases for this week. Awesome. Our Blu-ray releases for the week of October 20th, 2009. Blood, The Last Vampire. The Crew, Easy Rider. Monsoon Wedding, Criterion Collection. Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. UFC 100. And Waterworld. Dun, da, da, da. I actually never saw Waterworld. Uh, you're probably one of the lucky individuals that didn't have to suffer through that movie. All right, it's not as bad as The Postman, but it is an indescribable mess. Um, it is one of those films that featured everyone's favorite uh, Union soldier, uh, Kevin Costner. Gotcha. And, but uh, it's in Blu-ray. The only thing, the only upside of the movie is Dennis Hopper. Okay. So if you like Dennis Does he Hopper, play a bad movie, guy? yes. Awesome. I'll so he's he's a crazy, funny uh, bad guy. Now the thing about the uh, the uh, Roku Netflix. And you mentioned this before, is that um, most of those Netflix HD movies are actually 480p. 
the majority of them are. They're encoded as 480 line material in progressive format as they're streaming to the computer. But the new Select video at 720p is actually you know 1280 by 720, fairly compressed compared to say your high def sources you're getting from over the air television or from say even satellite or cable. I would say, and definitely Blu-ray. Uh, we're just talking a much lower bit rate in order to be able to stream that efficiently to you. They're not giving you, you know, 50 megabit over your over your weak internet connection and hose you completely. Instead, say about five to eight megabit though to get you really good quality. And uh, yeah, and that's one thing we do want to point out is don't expect Blu-ray quality. However, it is a much better uh, viewing experience than the standard Netflix streaming uh, videos. In fact, I often uh, will watch the Netflix, you know, box set of a, a TV show like Kiri's. Uh, heroes on Netflix versus just watching it over there. No commercials. Now, ideally, hopefully, in some of these upcoming boxes, they'll put better and better video processors in them too to help improve that quality when you watch it on larger and larger screens. That'd be one thing I like to see. Some of the some of the Blu-ray players actually use the video processing built into the player to help improve the video quality of even the lower bitrate streams. But either way, good stuff. Cool. All right, coming up next, upgrading your DVR's hard drive. But first, let's take a moment to thank one of the sponsors, Squarespace. Here to tell us more, Kaylee. Hello there, I'm Kaylee, an intern here at Revision 3, and I wanted to tell you why I use Squarespace to host my site. It's a powerful yet simple and elegant publishing platform that makes putting together my website a snap. I needed to be online someplace other than Facebook, and while I was at it, I wanted a place to put my photos, resume, and my blog. Now, I'm no coder, I'm a journalism student, but with Squarespace, that wasn't an issue. I picked up one of the beautiful designer templates and customized it to reflect the grand vision I had in my mind. In no time at all, I had a professional, great-looking website to call my own. There were a couple of music sites in particular that I really liked their clean, minimalist, but colorful design, and I wanted to incorporate that into my own site. And with Squarespace, it was easy. Now, I built mine from scratch, but if you've already got a blogger website, you can bring it over to Squarespace with their spiffy new blog importer tool. It lets you migrate your WordPress, blogger, typepad, and movable type posts and pages with the click of a mouse. It will automatically move over all of your comments, tags, authors, media, and search engine optimizations. That means you don't need to refight for your Google results page rank. And you can even test drive Squarespace for free for two weeks and see exactly how fun and easy it is. I know you've been meaning to get started on that website, and now's the time. And how about this for HD Nation fans? Plug in the code HDNation and get 10% off of the lifetime of your account. So what are you waiting for? Get your blog or website started today. Sign up at squarespace.com and use the code HDNation. You know what you guys forgot to talk about? Uh, no. Okay, Roku box. Oh yes. Very soon. Revision 3, all of our program is going to be available directly on the Roku box, streaming directly to the Roku box. Convenient. If you have the fat network connection, you'll even get it in the high definition 720p, or I should say high definition-ish 720p 30 frame per second version that you would normally download. I just added the 720p version of our show to my TiVo Series 3 really? HD in 720p, and it looked darn good. If you have a TiVo, that's a really easy way to watch our show. Speaking of the boxes you pile around your HDTV, if you've got the stock hard drive in your DVR, chances are after a season of your favorite show, maybe a couple movies in HD, you are out of space. Or you might have noticed that, say, 50 episodes of Blue's Clues take up almost exactly the same amount of space as two movies. How do you find that out? By deleting them. You're wondering what's going on here? <laughs> well, in short, HD takes up more space than standard def. On my DirecTV HD DVR, an hour of HD takes about six and a half times as much space as an hour of standard definition TV. Though you can pack, it's kind of nice, as they do the MPEG-4 upgrades, you can pack almost, not quite, almost twice as much MPEG-4 HD video as MPEG-2 encoded HD video. They pretty much look the same, but the MPEG-4 is more efficient in terms of hard drive space. Now. How much video do you think you can fit on a one terabyte hard drive? A lot. A lot. You but would be correct, sir. For most people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, a one terabyte drive is going to give you around 150 hours of HD and nearly 900 hours of standard definition video. It's according to the information up on weakknees.com. Though my understanding is the compression rate is variable. The more motion in the frame, the more space it'll take up. So you got a hockey game with a lot of camera movement or, or an action flick that's going to have a higher bit rate than something that's relatively static, like a person talking at the screen on the news show. So if you've got a tiny stock hard drive in your DVR, chances are your hard drive is 300 or 320 gigabytes. You probably want to upgrade. What's nice, though, is you don't have to crack the case open on most DVRs these days, unlike in the past when there was this long, complicated, painful 
uh, just I don't even want to talk about early hard drive upgrades. Most of them basically have a port on the case. You're running the TiVo. Totally. What have you done to upgrade yours? I did the internal upgrade. <gasps> so I pulled the old hard drive out, <laughs> used a free online tool, was able just to format the drive what it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, basically swapped out. I think it's a 250 gig drive was the default. Put in a terabyte drive, and I suddenly. You know, I, I have 100, 150 hours of HD, <laughs> something like 1,200 or so hours of SD if I needed it. it it's a ridiculous amount of storage, right. particularly for just one person. So, <laughs> Just one person. Yeah. You were mentioning the whole couples factor, the spousal every, factor on this. Every household I walk into where you've got two people with a DVR, you're essentially looking at, it's, it's a race to make sure that the percentage of how full the drive is never gets above, say, 70%, or else <laughs> something's not going to get recorded or something important's going to get erased. It's a hassle. There is literally, especially with HD video, you're ne you never have enough room. Right. You really, really don't. You should throw a toddler into the mix. It gets really sketchy. But we were mentioning, for TiVo as well, they also provide an eSATA port on mm -hmm. the back of the player. And some set-top boxes, uh, satellite boxes from, say, Dish Network, provide right. USB as well. And you can connect external hard drives yeah. and upgrade your storage that way. If you've got a DirecTV, uh, like an HR21 or an HR20, eSATA port to an external eSATA hard drive. Most of the cases I've tried, one, one external uh, SATA drive case didn't work. All the rest of them have worked. Basically, an external drive and a SATA cable and whatever size hard drive you can get, like up to a two terabyte hard drive, which would be like 300 hours of HD, you plug it in, and what happens, I gotta warn you, especially on the Direct TV, when you plug in the external drive, you no longer have access to the internal drive. There's no way to use both the internal and the external drive, which oh. I think sucks, but, well, it happens. But basically, what it does is you'll reboot, and it'll copy the information it needs to run onto the external drive, and then as you grab additional programming, it stores it all on the external drive. Now, if you really want to save the content you've already got stashed on your internal drive on a DirecTV box, the folks at weaknees.com can uh, actually do that for you. They will copy the information onto your hard drive if you buy one of their upgrades. They charge uh, 59 bucks for the service, W-E-K-N-E-E-S.com. And as far as I know, I haven't seen any DIY versions of that, so Weak Knees, that's a nice little hack you've got going there. And they are a, a really cool site. I've used them for Apple TV upgrades, TiVo upgrades in the past, good people over there. They're, they're the, I'd say, one of the original DVR yeah. upgrade companies out there, and they've been around for a long time. So and they've, yeah, they're they're usually on the leading edge of, of this stuff. So I go there and I drool. Can I can I get two terabytes in my DVR? Oh, okay. Then okay. can I do it myself? That's I get two doing. terabytes outside my DVR. You know, I'll I, I can just crack <laughs> open my case, stuff in a one terabyte drive, and see what happens. Yes, uh, you're, yes. you're leasing the hardware, right? Yeah, let's not even get into that. <laughs> Who's coming up on the sponsor list? Oh, let's see. GoDaddy.com. Get reliable, secure web hosting without a long-term contract. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99% uptime, free 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your own virtual dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. Use the code HDN2 to get $5 off any order of $30 or more. Some restrictions do apply. See the site for details and be sure to check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all the HD Nation GoDaddy deals and codes. Do us a favor, get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com and use an HDN code when you do. You'll be helping us out. You ready for some questions? Let's do it. All right, Leaf writes in from Tejas, that would be Texas, oh, yes. with a suggestion for anybody on the hunt for a big screen bargain. Love your show, very informative, he writes, but I'm pretty sad that you do not talk a little bit more about DLP screens. I know you can't hang a DLP on the wall, but so what? I bought a 65-inch 1080p Mitsubishi for my living room for under $1,000, that would be $999, and I have to say the picture is wonderful, bright, very vibrant colors. When it comes to size and price, I don't think anything could beat a good DLP screen. Screen, though it seems that there are only two manufacturers left that make them. Leaf in Rizal, Texas. I don't even know who the second company would be anymore. Yeah, it's basically Mitsubishi. I, I haven't seen they're anybody there. other than Mitsubishi. Yeah. What's been killing off? I mean, because basically, like, they're the last of the big rear projection screens. Um, they can buy. And for a 65 inch, for a 65 inch LCD, it's like 720 would be what four grand right now? Five grand? Yeah. 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 yeah, for a new 1080p 65-inch screen, about $4,000. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less if you shop around. I think part of it, Leaf, is that one, the, the prices of LCDs and plasmas have dropped considerably, and two, you can, you can fit a lot more LCD or plasma televisions inside of a container ship coming from Japan or Korea or China than you can gigantic big rear projection televisions. More units in less space equals lower shipping costs, which is one of the many factors that goes into driving down the cost of the televisions. You can also fit more of them in, a, in basically a warehouse, more of them in big box storage. And quite frankly, the demand actually is 
diminished rapidly as LCD flat panels and plasma flat panels got bigger uh, for less money. The market for, for rear projection screens, I think, is just However, dropped. My local discount store, a popular chain, they, they have them featured prominently right up mm -hmm. front. And people, people look at the price and they see the screen size, and that is the draw. It's, it's arguably the best value for the biggest screens. You won't find rear, rear projection TVs anymore under 50 inches. Right. They're all 60 plus now, up to, I think, 83 inches Mitsubishi has a new model at. You're the really you're, you're the hardware reviewer. Are you seeing anything that's gonna like what, what's what, what's the downside of a DLP screen these days? Uh, overall screen brightness compared mm -hmm. to a flat panel, particularly against an LCD panel, you, you're, you're not gonna have the same level of absolute brightness coming out of the front of the screen. Also, uh, honestly, viewing angles have always been mm -hmm. a, an issue with flat panel tele or with uh, rear projection televisions in that because they're focusing the majority of the light coming out of that screen directly at the viewer. Through a big Fresnel lens, right? Very big. And it's really concentrating the light so it's, it's brightest when you're sitting front and center. So if you get off to the side or particularly up and down, it used to be the biggest problem mm -hmm. is just moving up or down. Like if you want to lay on the floor and look up at the screen, sometimes there wasn't a picture there. Right. That's improved quite a bit, but it's still one of the big issues overall. And I'll be honest with you, it's just it, there are very few companies like Leaf mentioned. There are very few companies actually manufacturing these sets anymore, so uh, literally Mitsubishi's it. So if you, you want the good value. Do you see the project? I mean, are projectors kind of taken over for people who want the wall of, of movie? Because like, oh, projectors totally. are under $1,000 now for a decent 1080p projector. You, you have even more, the room becomes even more of a factor in a situation mm -hmm. with a front projector. You have to have good light control, and the room, you know, it helps to have a very dark room in order to produce a very well contrasted picture. Right. Rear projection helps defeat some of the room lighting issues because you're projecting from behind, and then you're not, you know, instead of having light hitting the screen and causing major issues with a front projector, mm -hmm. instead it's hitting it from behind and creating, you know, the image more directly that right. way. So there are benefits like that, and really it's just straight up value. If you if you can't afford a flat panel like a plasma or an LCD at that same screen size, rear projection does offer a terrific value. I just just try to keep the family grouped sort of in front of it. If if you're seated in the in the in the cash seat, you're gonna have a, <laughs> you're gonna have a pretty darn good viewing experience, no doubt about that. And uh, performance overall, though, I would say that they're starting to catch up in terms of things like uh, on LCDs for pixel performance, mm -hmm. they're doing things like 120 hertz, 240 hertz. You have similar issues though in rear projection, particularly with DLP that uses a spinning color wheel. You're not projecting all three colors at once or right. multiple color at once. You're you're doing red, then blue, then green, and you're cycling through that. And that can cause interesting artifacts, like rainbow artifacts and other things like right. that, under under highly contrasted scenes. So, it, it's a tough call. I mean, it, again, the number one benefit of a rear projection set is straight up value. That's right. really what it comes down to. Leaf, you're right. If you need a cheap TV for the party room, DLP oh, is still the way to go. Big screen, impressive picture. Do it. We almost never talk about OS 10 on the show. No. That would be the Apple operating system. We got a question for, well, basically, here's the question. I have many Blu-ray movies, but I can't watch them here at college because I didn't bring my TV or PS3 to school. Probably a wise choice for your grades and your study habits. Are there any external Blu-ray players that will work with my 24-inch iMac? And is there any way to watch Blu-rays in OS X Snow Leopard without using Boot Camp or any other weird thing? I don't have any Windows PCs, and I'd love to enjoy Blu-rays on my iMac screen, writes Brendan. Well, here's the deal. Just about any external Blu-ray drive will work just fine with your iMac. The problem is there is no OS X Blu-ray playback software that we've seen anywhere. So you are stuck with a weird thing, like Boot Camp and booting into Windows. Look, you could try VMware Fusion and Parallels, so basically our emulation software that lets you run Windows application inside of OS X, but I haven't heard of anyone having any success using Blu-ray playback software under them because I believe HDCP gets broken through the virtualization pass-through. Um, we got all the major Blu-ray home theater PC software on the way, so we'll do our best to get him running on OS X2 because there's a couple new emulation tools I haven't had a chance to check out. But so far, right now, I think your stuff is you're stuck doing the weird stuff. And, until Apple launches their own software right. that's compatible with playback as well. That, that, I would assume, would happen sooner rather than later, but I haven't seen an announcement yet. So kind of left hanging for the Mac OS X users. Yeah, the, uh, Mr. Jobs not a big Blu-ray fan, at least not yet. Yeah, he's coming around. He's coming around, <laughs> eventually. You know, the Pixar thing. Hey, the Totally Rad Show recently relaunched with all new intros and weekly theme songs and more ways for you, the audience, to get involved. This week's show was huge. They're talking about the new game Uncharted 2, the hotly anticipated Where the Wild Things Are movie, as well as the new TV show Flash Forward. Also, the Totally Rad Show guys played video games for 24 hours straight to help raise money for pediatric cancer research. You can check it all out at revision3.com slash TRS, and be sure to come back every Tuesday for every new episode of the Totally Rad Show, where revision3.com slash TRS people. 
Oh, I picked up Uncharted 2 this weekend. I, I just finished the first one, mm -hmm. Uncharted, and then I picked up Uncharted 2, and the first thing I did was go right into the audio setup, and they had an option for Dolby Digital 5.1 or DTS 5.1, mm -hmm. and I sat there in a quiet room, went back and forth. I really couldn't hear the difference. He brings it up because a few of you have been emailing saying, good God, how could you not hear the differences? <laughs> so we'll we'll continue to play around. The, I think it was it was one of the sort of Dolby True versus the DTS HD. Uh, or, probably so. I, I personally yeah. would like to get a cage match set up between the Dolby guys and the DTS guys. Have them go back and forth and try to convince us who, who oh, so has the better sticks. tech. you want sticks. You want them to actually discuss the technology. I would. That's actually no, tempting. Not a blood match, but <laughs> just a, a good poking. There, there is no <laughs> good poking. <laughs> Pillows, people. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So send your comments, your questions, your suggestions to us at hdnation at revision3.com. Or hang out with other viewers in the HD Nation forums at revision3.com slash forum. Now, if you want to find everything we talked about in today's show with links and stuff, head on over to revision3.com slash hdnation. That's where all that stuff is stashed in the show notes. You'll also find all the links to subscribe to the show. So if you're not getting the latest episode of HD Nation delivered to your podcatcher, what are you waiting for? Fire up your iTunes your Moreau, whatever you're using. Hey, hey, you know what else is on there? What? You can go to the Flash Player at the top. You can basically like fast forward something. Like if you want to tell somebody like what you want for Christmas, you can catch the video at the exact section you want and embed that in your like web page or nice. send it to somebody an email. So you can bookmark time code. Yes. Share us with like your that. friends. Please. That's right, people. <laughs> Just subscribe and watch. And until next time, I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week on HD Nation.